know what kicks ass? Power Rangers. You want to know what had horrible puns? Movie. You want to know what was different for each console? The game based on the movie. Let's compare the Mega Drive version to the Super Nintendo version. Brief description. The Mega Drive version is a beat-em-up like that of Double Dragon, and the Super Nintendo version is basically a sequel to the original game and retains the same Streets of Rage slash Shinobi hybrid gameplay. So, let's start. Graphics. Well, both games have equally good graphics, and I couldn't really think which one was better, so I decided with a tiebreaker. The appearance of the suits. Yeah, I know, it's kind of silly, but let me explain. Something that bugged me about the Super Nintendo version is that, aside from Tommy for obvious reasons, all the original suits were just palette swaps of the Tyranno Ranger suit. Now, this doesn't seem so bad if you morph into the Tricera Ranger than the Mastodon Ranger, when you morph into the Patera Ranger, it's very distracting. I mean, look at it. Does Kimberly suddenly inhale steroids and Viagra when she morphs? They didn't even try and put in a skirt make it a bit different for God's sake. Well, in the Mega Drive version, the suits actually look different. They have their own visors and own features, and aren't just palette swaps. <coughs> Music. <sighs> this is quite difficult to decide. On one hand, you have actually very well done tracks. On the other hand, you have Mega Drive versions of the Ron Rasserman songs from the show. Huh. Oh, what the hell, I'm too lazy. Let's just give them both a point. If we're talking about Power Rangers, we have to do this. Bulk and Skull joke. The answer is simple. The Genesis version wins, because one, it actually has a rendition of the Bulk and Skull theme in that joke, Two, it's a lot like in the movie because they're boasting about how badass they were and that the Power Rangers came to help them. And three, it's not like the Super Nintendo version where they jump into the boxing ring and Tommy and Rocky decide to unleash ultra combos on their asses for no reason and look like absolute pricks. Story. The Super Nintendo version basically has no story and very little connection to the film other than that the final boss is Ivan Ooze and the Ninja Falcon Megazord makes a brief cameo at the end. Also, on another note, that thing looks freaking ridiculous. The Mega Drive version, on the other hand, actually adapts not only the movie, but basically bits of Season 2 that were important, like Lord Zed showing up, Tommy losing his Green Ranger powers, getting the White Ranger powers, the power transfer, and not only that, but it actually has cutscenes. However, I would be lying if I said I wasn't annoyed that they decided to just relegate the whole Fado's ninja power thing to just a cutscene. Level design. Now this isn't talking about like how the levels are done, just the appearance of them and where you're going through. In the Mega Drive version, you explore a street, another street, the scenic park overlooking the lake, a cave, and an exploding planet. In the Super Nintendo version, you explore a shopping mall, an aircraft carrier, snowy mountains, an oil tank train, a factory with a freaking huge tower, a deadly military fortress, and Ivan Ooze's exploding fortress of doom. Point to the Super Nintendo version. <coughs> Variety. Well, the main downside with the Mega Drive version is that you're just doing the same thing over and over again. Punch, 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 special, move on. The only difference is that you control a Megazord every once in a while, but even then the only difference is that now you can guard. Meanwhile, in the Super Nintendo version, in addition to beating up putties, it also has you do some platforming, you get to snowboard down mountains, and escape exploding fortresses. Bosses. Well, let's see. They are, both games do have bosses at the end of every level, but I think I'm going to go with the Super Nintendo version because the bosses actually are a lot trickier and require a lot of strategy, while the Genesis version simply just has enemies with longer health bars. Challenge. I guess this depends entirely on when you whether you like tough games or not. Meaning, if you're a bit rubbish at games and don't want a hard time and just want to kill 40 minutes, then go for the Genesis version. But if you want a challenge and actually want to kill a couple of hours, go for the Super Nintendo version. Ironically enough, even though I prefer easier games, I actually prefer the Super Nintendo version. I don't know why, I think it's just that it's really satisfying defeating a boss with one block of health left or figuring out how to get through a really annoying bit that's been bugging you for the last five minutes. And as I've already stated, there's more stuff to do, and 
it isn't a chore to play through. So, in conclusion, the Mega Drive version gets points for staying true to the show atmosphere-wise, but ultimately, the Super Nintendo version is a much more fun game.